Hello, welcome to part two in this series of Frogger SFML object oriented example. And we created in the first part a simple Frogger game in one file. But now, what we're going to do over the next few videos is abstract it out into separate files, separate classes. So let's just get down to that. So, what we're going to do is create a class file, or a class, I should say. So, new file. If you're using Visual Studio, there'll be a very similar method. It's got to create a header file and a CPP file. So also create a header. And this is on the frog. I'm going to call it frog. Go next and add it to my project. Again, if you're using Visual Studio or any other IDE, the process is very similar. As long as you know how to use that IDE, you'll be all good to go. So in here, yeah, actually, if I go to the Frogger header file, for example, get rid of everything, put hashtag pragma once, and then I'm going to put hash include. I'm going to do sfml for slash graphics dot hpp. Now I'm going to create a class called frog, and in here, I'm going to have a few public methods. First being a constructor sf vector2 so this is will take a vector to you which is a vector of two unsigned integers and the reason it will take a vector like so we'll be using that to be able to position our frog we're gonna now do void draw so this method will be used to actually draw our frog this will take a reference to our render window and this will be called window. This is what we created in our main file right here. So it's going to take a reference to this because we want to be able to draw to the original one and not to some local copy of window in draw, which won't be visible. We want a void move. And because if we go back to the main CPP, if we look at the way we're doing move, we are doing it based on events. We are going to take in a SF event. And we're going to do an event like so. We don't want to reference or anything to the original one because we don't need to, beyond just accessing the values, we don't need to modify it anyway. We don't need to draw to it or anything like that. So this is fine. We are now going to create a method called SF rectangle shape. I mean, it's going to be called get shape, but the return type is SF rectangle shape. Might, this might seem a bit odd, but again, the principle is the same as having void here, bool here, int here, or SF rectangle shape. This is just the return type, aka the type of data that needs to be returned by the end of the method. Void just means it doesn't, re doesn't need any return. Bool means it needs to return like a true or false or a one or zero value. And a SF rectangle shape, well, it needs to return a rectangle shape. We're actually going to create a private variable, which is going to be our rectangle shape. So SF rectangle shape, and this is going to be called frog, like so. And this is what's going to be returned. So in our frog.cpp, let's just create the different methods that we have in our header file. Actually, to save some time, I'm going to copy and paste this into here. I'm going to put at the start of it, frog colon colon, because we are accessing the frog's methods. And remember, you do it before the method name and not before the return type, the constructor then have a return type, so hence why it's at the start of the line. And now let's do for this one. Okie dokie. So for this method, this is a very simple method. This is going to return frog. So this is returning our frog shape, which we will be using for collision detection within our main. And after we created the frog class, we will actually be creating a truck class as well. So for the constructor in here, we're going to do the same thing that we did right here. So to do that, we just cut this out of here, go to our CPP file, 
paste it here like so and now the size value is fine but it's moaning about the window.get size because we actually use in the main the window we've got the size of it and we factor that in to the positioning we don't actually need anything else from the window so what we're going to do when we construct the frog in the main is just pass in the size itself so we can replace window.get size with size.y like so that's a okay that's fine now now for the draw method we are going to get what we the line of code that we use to draw it which is this so if we cut this go into cpp paste it here so window is what's passed in as a reference so it's accessing the original window this is accessing the draw method of the original window and we're passing in the frog shape that we created here so now what we're going to do is implement the move method for that what we can do is just grab everything from this case which was the key released case go to the cpp file paste that into here and that's it for the actual frog class so now if we go back to our main if we scroll to the top instead of doing sf rectangle shape frog we're actually going to create an object of our frog class so if i do hash include we need to include the frog header file and we're going to do frog and i'm going to call it frog i'm going to construct it with the window dot get size and now everywhere that we was using frog before so when we was moving it we call the appropriate method so frog so this is the object not the class the object that we created here which happens to be called frog with a lowercase f dot move we pass in the event which is what we created here so we do event like so and now what we need to do is instead of doing frog dot get global bounds we need to replace this well actually because we're going to get the global bounds of the frog shape that's returned frog is also the name of our object so if you do get shape and this gets the rectangle shape and if we do dot this now gets the global bounds and finally instead of doing window.draw we do frog.draw passing the window as a reference by calling window now if we run it As you can see, we still have the exact thing that we did last time. So we've done the frog aspect of it now. Now let's implement the truck part. So the truck part is actually going to be very similar. So let's create a truck class. So new file. This is going to be C++ file. And I'm going to call it truck and now in i'm going to get rid of these comments don't don't get rid of the hash include in the header file get rid uh let's reopen it because sometimes it does this let's just put hash pragma once and now because it's going to be very similar to the frog class let's copy and paste this into here there's no need for me to do that actually and rename this to truck so i need to sort out the truck method as well for the draw that is a-okay for the movement we're not moving it based on an event we're moving it based on a particular x and y value so we are actually going to pass in a sf vector to you and this is going to be a size value we are still getting the shape and for this we're going to call this truck we need a couple of float variables so float original pos x and an original pos y so this will be used when resetting the position of our truck when it goes off screen because we need to know where was it originally set so now in the cpp file so for the constructor we can do the same thing just grab 
all of this, put it into the constructor. Actually, before we do that, to create the methods, empty methods that is, and so we paste that here. Remember, we are accessing methods of the truck class, so truck colon colon, and truck colon colon again. And it's giving me errors because I haven't actually put the curly braces. And now for the get shape, remember you just do return truck or whatever your shape happens to be called. If you go back to the main again, I need to undo this so I can cut it. Go to truck CPP, paste this here. So now let's fix some of the errors that we're getting. So instead of doing window.getSize, we are actually doing. Also, forgot one other thing as well. Truck is not just going to take a size value, it's also going to take a float pos x and float pos y. It actually doesn't require the size because we're going to be passing in the position, the initial position. So that way we can create several trucks and only have one class. So if I go to truck CPP, paste this here and what we want to do is replace all of this with pos x and pos y like so and the last thing we're going to do is assign pos x and pos y to original pos x equals pos x original pos y to pos y like so now for the draw method very simple same as last time window dot draw and we just put in truck and if we go to our main we will now get this which moves our truck so if we cut that go to our cpp file paste it into here so this moves the truck and it checks the position so instead of doing window dot get size oh i didn't realize that the autocorrect did sf colon colon window dot get size that wasn't needed all you needed actually was this in the previous video so that was my bad that that should not have been there so instead of window dot get size we just put size dot x and we just put size dot y like so so now if we go back to our main essentially the same principle as before instead of creating a rectangle shape we need to do hash include truck not cvp truck dot hpp now what we're going to do is do truck name it truck remember we are passing in the initial values, the initial position, so I'm going to put zero. Window dot get size dot y divide by two. Now, if I scroll down, we don't need to do anything with the events for the truck, but in the update, instead of doing the movement here and checking if it's gone off the screen, what we are actually doing now is truck dot move. And this will take a size, which is the window size. So we just do window dot get size, like so. And now the last thing is we need to put the same thing here for the truck, so we get the shape. And instead of window dot draw, so this is the last thing: truck dot draw window. And now let's run it and see what we get. Okay, just need to shut down Xcode as having this problem last video as well. But sometimes it's just my computer, I need to fix Xcode. So we shut it down, reopen it, run it, and here we go. In my thinking, there's nothing that's changed. 
and you're correct. At the moment, we were just trying to make it to the same thing that happened last time. You may have noticed that it actually went up. The truck did, so let's have a look at why it went up. So let's have a look at the truck CPP. So in truck CPP, what we do is when we set the position, we do the trucks get size X, that's fine. We also do size dot Y minus truck get size. Now what we, we don't actually want to do that. We want to set it to the original position. So original pause dot Y. And the reason we're not doing that for the original pause X is because it would actually be on the screen. Remember in the last video when it went off, it sort of just jumped on the screen to its initial position. We want it sort of offset so it moves onto the screen. Now let's run it. So now let's sort of go here. That truck really should be faster. This should move on to the same level which it did. Let's make sure the collision is working. There you go. We still have our amazing frog example, but now it's in classes and it's just a lot more elegant. So let me show you something pretty darn cool. If I were to create another truck, call it truck two for example, and maybe I were to set the position of this truck to be, say divide by four, so it's in a different Y position. And let's create another one, truck three. And I'm just gonna do, I'll, I'll just set this to zero so it's at the top. And now to move it, all we do is duplicate this method, two, three, we draw it, all we do is two and three. We're not gonna check for any collision. You will just need to duplicate this and change this to truck two and three. But as you will see now, we have three different trucks with very minimal code. So instead of having to do duplicate a ridiculous amount of code, we just need to create another object. That's the beauty of object-oriented object -oriented programming. You don't have to repeat the process of, let's say, moving it the same way again and again. You don't have to repeat the process of drawing it or like the check for if it's gone off screen. Once you've got it working once, you can just keep reusing it. I'm actually gonna get rid of these because you can add as many as you want, but we don't need this for the next few tutorials. Okay, so we've got a pretty cool Frogger example. So this is just the class introduction to making it object oriented. What we're gonna do next is create a game class, which will actually abstract out pretty much everything from the main. So the main will be about 10 lines of code, something ridiculously low, and it's just gonna be a even easier to manage. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on our educational platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. There'll be a link in the description to that, plus a link to the GitHub page, which contains the source code from every video in this series. And as usual, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.